Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, Hurricane Fiona has had catastrophic results on Puerto Rico and about to be a major hurricane going all the way up to the northern Atlantic. Literally knocked out power to the whole island two days after Hurricane Maria anniversary five years ago. Plus, it brings 100 miles per hour winds not only to Puerto Rico, also the nearby islands, bringing flooding, breaking bridges, bring a massive flooding across all the towns in Puerto Rico. And you can see the debris flow from all this winds coming off of the wall. Remember, all these links are in the description for you to go watch them yourself. And the flooding was everywhere in Puerto Rico. They still having problems, but look at this massive flow of flooding. But it's a big difference between this storm and what Hurricane Maria did. They already have over 100,000 homes with power back already. And they are sending 125 megawatts of power being delivered to the customers in Puerto Rico. Now 100 megawatts of power can give electricity to over 16,000 homes. So it just is not solving the problem, but at the same time, at least they're getting on it. They have over 100,000 people back with power already. Plus as this big monster system goes up to the Atlantic, goes by Turks and Caicos, Bermuda, then goes by the Northern Atlantic. But as that heads to the Northern Atlantic, we're gonna get this big cold blast coming through and maybe a colder blast coming later in September. That one's a little bit iffy. But remember, all the timestamps are in the description to help save you time. Use the timestamps as well as the links if you want to watch those videos all the way through. You can also see what your streamlining winds that as Hurricane Fiona heads towards Turks and Caicos, there is going to be some winds coming from the Southern Caribbean going north. And that would put some wind shear on that system while all these winds are carrying it from the west to the east pushing the system to the east and to the north. You can see the flow right here. Then we get this trough coming down and that continues to push it to the east going towards Bermuda. No threat to the U.S., but it is a lot of threats to a lot of people and bringing severe weather as this powerful system continues going through Canada to the east coast. Now, as of early this morning, they still have it going to be a major hurricane as it passes by. Turks and Caicos, Euro takes it a little bit later, still a major hurricane, even brings it out to a Cat 4. But Turks and Caicos, you're looking by tomorrow by 1 p.m., you're going to be getting over 109 miles per hour wind gust as it goes by you. And it does go by Bermuda very close, bringing over 127 miles per hour wind gust, but it's not bringing 127 to Bermuda. So far, I'm showing 80 and 90. Now, National Weather Service does have it as a major hurricane going by Bermuda and weakening down as it goes by the northern Atlantic. But the Euro seems to see the wobble. It sees a big wobble happening, and that's going to be a big difference for Bermuda. It is east side loaded, so you are going to get some big impacts off of it. But as you go through the northern Atlantic, it does weaken down, but Euro says it will be a Cat 4. Most of the ensembles are showing a high-end Cat 3, but that is a possibility. Either way, it's going to be a very strong storm passing through the northern Atlantic, going towards Canada. But just by the winds, around midnight tonight, Turks and Caicos, you're going to be getting a lot of strong winds. Definitely tropical storm winds by midnight, but once it comes early in the morning, then the full system is coming by, still showing around 60 miles per hour steady winds. That's going to be not wind gusts. That is strong winds coming your way, and it is bringing some strong wind gusts as it heads towards Bermuda and strengthening up to a major hurricane. And when it goes by Bermuda, it's going sometime around Friday, tropical storm conditions, even bringing 50s and 60s. So even though it's still a little far away, you will be on the edge of hurricane conditions. Then as it goes up to the northeast, it gets even stronger, heads towards Nova Scotia, goes a little bit east because we do have this big piece of this powerful storm coming from Canada, going to the east coast, and it is bringing y'all the severe weather, and it is what's pushing this to the east. It will be sometime around Friday going into Saturday when that comes through. Plus, the winds from the storm really get strong, the wind gusts. As it goes five days, it goes by Bermuda, and as you do the full track, it goes up to the northern Atlantic. But you're talking about Turks and Caicos, over 100 miles per hour wind gusts, definitely coming by y'all, so please prepare for that. And then it does go by Bermuda and hits the edge of Bermuda. You're on the east side of this system, and that's where a lot of the strength is. And right now it's showing 80 miles per hour wind gusts, but just right to the west of you is 90s and 100s, and 
a very powerful system coming through 140. Now National Hurricane Center does take this track a little bit closer. Euro is seeing this wobble where it has a chance to move away from you as it strengthens. Bring about 30 to 40 miles per hour wind gusts on the east coast as this system moves through. Like I said, y'all do have a severe weather outlook for that. Then as it goes by, Nova Scotia is bringing anywhere from tropical storm wind gusts all the way up to the 90s and the hundreds offshore. Plus the rainfall amount. So these bands are gonna keep on hitting Puerto Rico for the days to come. In the next three days, you're gonna get another three to five inches of rainfall coming to the flooding that y'all have already. Beyonce is one of the biggest hard hit areas and it is gonna be where the biggest area of these rain bands are gonna to continue to keep flowing for y'all. As it goes by Turks and Caicos, bringing a lot of rainfall over six inches to most of the areas. It is hitting just Cockburn Town the most, but it is gonna hit a lot of y'all with a lot of winds as well. Now Bermuda, the next five days, it comes close to you and so far is not a lot of rainfall. It seems like mostly it will be a wind event for you. But as it goes to the Northeast as well, it's not getting on our coast. It is pushing to the East, but it's bringing heavy rainfall towards Nova Scotia as well. Now you can also see with the streamlined winds that as it leaves Turks and Caicos getting pushed out by that trough and it starts heading a little more northern but then we get that last piece that comes from Canada that came from that big storm on the west coast and it curves and brings it out but at the same time it is going to be bringing y'all severe weather. But you can see it for yourself it just gets close to the east coast and then it just pushes it away just like a batter hitting a baseball. Now this will be bringing y'all some severe weather as it moves from Canada, goes through the Northeast out into the Atlantic, and it'll be from Wednesday into Thursday. You do have a 15% chance of severe weather. And here's your towns that's affected by it. In the brown, you got Columbus, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Akron, Ohio, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. In the 15%, you have Detroit, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, Buffalo, New York, and Rochester, New York. And you can see as you go from Tuesday with your lightning strikes into Wednesday that it is bringing a lot of severe weather for the intercoastal northeast as you go through Wednesday night and Wednesday evening all the way to Thursday morning. You also get some very high waves as it passes by Turks and Caicos. It is bringing very big waves over 20 feet going around the island with the biggest being 30 feet as this system passes by you a lot of big waves then it grows even bigger as it goes towards bermuda look at the size of that monster and it is bringing over 40 foot waves as it passes by bermuda so i'm not showing a lot of rainfall yet but i am showing a lot of serious winds and a lot of waves coming for y'all high 20s way worse than turks and caicos with high 40s just a little bit west of you. As it goes towards the northeast, I expect it to bring some rip tides. It does bring y'all eight to 10 foot waves as it passes by. But as it goes by Nova Scotia, it is bringing a lot of strong winds up here as well. It's still 40 foot waves bringing 20 and 30 foot waves as this comes on land. And so far it's headed straight for Corner Brook. That's a lot of high waves, a lot of strong winds. I'm sure it'll change a little bit. I will keep you updated. Plus, as this system comes through, we're going to have some cooler air. Now, there is going to be a dip of some cooler air in the early 20s and maybe a bigger dip of some even colder air, maybe some Arctic air coming late 20s where everybody's going to be in some freezing temperatures. Euro is showing it's going to be around 40s to 50s. GFS has been trending some 30s coming with it. But when you look at GFS, you can see how later in the 20s, how that second cold front really is iffy whether it comes or not. So it's too far away to say we have Arctic air coming at the end of the month. We do have this first cold front. But you can see this from your 500 millibar vorticity as that baseball bat comes out with the first cold front, gets Fiona away from the East Coast, brings it to Northern Atlantic. We have this next cold front coming in, a big high pressure pulling all this cold air down. And it's going to rush in all the way to the south and the southeast. Now, how deep that's going is still a little iffy, just like I showed you GFS. Don't know which way to go yet. It's still a little too far to be sure, but we do have that potential. And you can see this here with your temperatures. So as you go through today, you got some nice cool temperatures this morning. You will warm back up, but the northwest is going to be seeing this cold front first for tomorrow. Then it's going to start moving as you go from Wednesday over towards the upper Midwest. 
Then it's going to move towards the northeast, and you're not going to be getting so much of these cold blasts. But it will be cooler temperatures overnight, warm back up throughout the day. And as you go through Friday, possibly coming back down again. I will update you. But for the east side of the U.S., you're still going to be feeling these warm temperatures all the way to Wednesday, then possibly Wednesday night. Some nice cool temperatures coming in on this first cold front as it bats that storm away. And when that next cold front comes through, you see it dips pretty good on the 23rd all the way till Friday. But after that, maybe even deeper. Still a little too far to be sure, but GFS and Euro is a little bit different on the amounts. Euro is showing it would be somewhere in the 50s when this next one comes through. GFS has been trending that we got some 30s and 40s coming with it. The 0Z and the 6Z both agree. So I will keep you updated to see if that second cold blast comes through with the Arctic temperatures. Right now it's looking like 40s and 50s, but it could go pretty far to the deep south, maybe the panhandle of Texas. Because right around the 27th, GFS is showing that it will come way down with a high pressure pulling everything around and everybody's gonna get in on these cooler temperatures. It's even gonna affect Texas a little bit as it comes down. But it is gonna be a big portion of the US with a cool down. Plus, as you look with the Euro, you see Fiona getting on out of here, zipping around, strengthening up. There's a potential as this cold blast comes through around the 23rd that we have a tropical wave coming through. And it has been trending a little bit that it could come into our Gulf while we have that next big cold front, which I showed you is not sure whether it's coming or not. So our next formation will be coming from the Central American Gyre, although it has been trending a little bit that it could keep going west. GFS has been seeing that curve right around Florida. Euro is starting to pick up on it. And you can see for yourself, it is literally at the end of the run. So it's too far away to even take this seriously yet. I will keep you updated. Because the latest with the GFS shows that we will have some favorable environment sometime around the beginning of October and a little bit on. We're not going to have any favorable environment while that potential can happen. So I think it's going to drag on a little bit further because Euro is showing it will go a little bit further. So as you look for your 15 day outlook, you can see how we're in a neutral phase with a little bit of lift. Then we start getting some sinking air around that time, but we do have a little bit of potentials. We'll keep my eye on it. So far, it'll be something weak. But as you go through the 45 day, you can see pretty much it's unfavorable environment. And the beginning of October, all the way to the 10th, is when we're going to start having good favorable environment, good chances for these systems to grow through the end of October as well. But that's what I have for y'all so far. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I hope you have a very blessed day today. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the path of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. Have a great day today, guys. God bless every single one of you. God bless you, Puerto Rico, Turks and Caicos. I pray you will be okay. All glory. All power does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.